Gibt's richtig, ganz alle. Also viel Spaß mit euch und bis später. Ciao. How you doing, everybody? So who's ready for a Guild Wars 2 demo? All right. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna show you a little bit of. Try to get the touch screen to work here. Just a second. There we go. So we're gonna show you a little bit of the game. We're gonna show you the Char introduction experience. Uh, sort of the Char newbie experience here in Guild Wars 2. Um, but first, we're going to show you a little bit of one of our new features here at Cologne. Uh, that is character creation. Uh, so humans have the most robust character creation we've got in the game right now. Um, so we're going to show you a little bit of that first before we jump over and check out the Char. So uh, we'll go ahead and make a, a human warrior here. And you'll notice that you can adjust a lot of things on these characters. Right off the bat, you can adjust height. Um, you can adjust the build of your human as well. So if you want to have a real buff guy, you can do that. You want to be a little thinner, you can do that. Whatever size you want to have. Um, and then you can start to get into more of the uh, fine details of your character creation here. Uh, so you get down to the, the face and the hair options. Uh, there's some really, uh, really cool haircuts. There is the no haircut if you want it. Um, and you can dye all the hair colors, uh, different colors. You've got that entire panel there to pick from of all the different colors you can do. We have requests for the afro, I'm told. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll show him another time. You guys, oh, we got him. All right, you can try the afro on the demo floor. Uh, so next up, we're gonna do face and skin color here. Um, so you can actually adjust the skin colors from a lot of different options. You can set various face options for your character. Uh, so then we go down to your beard, your facial hair. If you're a Norn female, you may have to deal with this as well. Uh, so uh, you've got some options here to pick from. Obviously, there's just a few right now. There will be more options for character customization down the road um, for all the various races, including the humans. Um, now we've got the little details that make your face really memorable from other people. Uh, at this point, we're dealing with little things like eye angles the size of your eye, the angle of your eyebrows, and the size of eyebrows. We want to have all of these customization options there, so when you make a character, you can make a character that looks unique and distinct from everyone else in the game, even down to the little details that is the face that you see for that character. That's very important to us. And now you get to pick from some of the die options. Uh, you can see up here some of the colors of dyes available in Guild Wars 2. These are just a very small sample of the huge amount of die colors that are available to you when you're dyeing your armor in Guild Wars 2. Uh, one of the best parts of this is you actually get three die channels to pick from on each piece of armor, which allows it to have more die customization than what you would find in a traditional MMO. Uh, and one of the greatest features of this is the die colors that you set up for your armor, when new armor drops for you in the game, that armor automatically picks up the die colors that you've got set so that when new armor drops, you can just put it on and have it ready to go and have it look really good on your character. So uh, we've shown you a little bit of human uh, character customization here. Now we're going to jump over and we're going to check out the char. And I think we'll do a char engineer. Um, and you'll see that the char doesn't have quite as many customization options yet. However, it does have some really distinct things that separate it from the human. For example, you can pick from different fur patterns for your char, and you can pick different colors for the fur patterns that are available to your character to use. So we can make a leopard char, or a panther char, or a tiger char, lots of different color options that are available. Oh, that looks sweet. All right, we'll go on to head options now. So you got some options to give your char some uh, pretty cool or pretty interesting looking haircuts. Uh, and then from there, We've got a few facial options. Um, and again, there'll be a lot more of these as we get stuff all put together for the game. Uh, and finally, the defining characteristic of your char is his horns. Do you want horns that bend down? Do you want no horns? Do you want horns that are sideways? You got a lot of great options here to pick from. So we're gonna dye our char's armor here and then we're gonna jump in and we're gonna check out the intro char experience. So we're gonna we're gonna pick a particularly ferocious char. He's gonna be a member of the Iron Legion. Uh, and this question here is very important to the char. All of these questions that you've seen so far help determine the personal story that your character experiences in the game. 
So how you answer these questions in your character's biography define the story experience you will have in the game. So each person could experience a different story when they're playing through Guild Wars 2. This question here is, who is your buddy uh, in your Char Warband? Who is your closest friend? And this is going to be the character who continues on with you as you play through the game and is the, one of the key NPCs in your story that you experience. Each of these guys have unique personalities, unique dialogue, and so you can play through the Char stories over and over again with different Warband members and experience different content from them. All right, next question here is another part of your biography. This is, uh, so Char don't really care who their parents were, but uh, in this case, this is the, who, who is the Char who sired me? Uh, not who is my dad, because that's not important to Char. Um, and this is another storyline you get to experience in the game. If you said your dad was a, uh, an honorless shaman, you might have to track him down and try to deal with the fact that he, uh, he has become a shaman. All right, and now you see a summary of the biography of your character. This is who your character is. This is their story. As you play through the game, you can go back and you can see the character's history. And a journal continues to update that tracks all the things your character's done. So you can go read and read the story of who your character is. And know who is my character in this game world. I am a char. In this world of constant battle, I am the deadliest weapon of all. I respect no authority, but the clenched fists are my legion. With engines of destruction, we have killed our gods. We reclaimed our homeland of Ascalon and we planted victory banners on the graves of our enemies. Yet, if we waver, it could slip through our claws. Victory, at any cost. The Iron Legion's All right, this is the point where your cinematic actually branches based on the character creation options you picked in your dia uh, biography. So each character, based on if they picked Ash, Iron, or Blood Legion, will actually get a completely different cinematic here. respect of my comrades, and forged alliances I can call on in times of need. My legion values innovative solutions, efficient execution. Like our steel, we do not bend. Centuries ago, humans stole Ascalon from the Iron Legion. They have paid for that crime in blood, but the usurpers fight us even in death. Today, the combined armies of the Black Citadel will assault the ghost that plague Iron Legion territory. I've been assigned to reinforce the Bulwark. Let the Ash Legion strike from the shadows. Let the Blood Legion die on the field. I am part of the machine. This is my story. So a little setup of where we're headed here next. We're headed to the Char tutorial. This is basically the starting experience for the Char. And the story here is 200 years ago, the armies of the Char had marched to the gates of Ascalon City. And rather than surrender the city to the Char, the human king Adelburn shattered his sword and cursed the humans who defended the lands, turning them into ghosts who would endlessly fight on to defend all of Ascalon. Um, so we are now fighting at the edges of Char territory, pushing into the ruins of Ascalon to fight against the armies of the ghosts. So we've made a few changes to the game since uh, last we showed it. One of the things you guys will notice is uh, we've done skill acquisition a little bit differently. So it used to be that you went to a trainer and acquired skills, and we didn't think that was actually teaching the game well enough, and we didn't think it was explaining the difference between the left half of the skill bar and the right half of the skill bar. So what we've done with weapon skills is as you use a weapon and get better with it, you start unlocking skills. Now we don't want this to be a grindy process, we want it to be uh, a really simple process that you can go through and it just helps you learn the weapon. So you'll notice uh, Ben is still in the tutorial and he's, he's almost unlocked his second skill, he's about halfway there. 
Um, and so we want this to be a really, really simple, easy process. So when you pick up a new weapon, you can, you can learn the skills kind of gradually. Um, we don't want it to be a big grindy thing. Medic! Somebody. I need your help, soldier. Tribune Brimstone has ordered me to the crypt, but I'm too torn up to make it. What's so important that the Blood Legion Tribune is there? The ghost of Duke Veritan is far more powerful than we thought. His army just broke through our defenses. Bitlock's about to fight him head on. If he succeeds, it'll be weeks before the ghost reforms, and we can rebuild our perimeter. On my way. So uh, we're headed now to try to track down Duke Baradin, who some of you may remember if you are Guild Wars 1 fans. Uh, he is at the head of this army that is fighting against the Char, and we're going to meet up with Ritlock Brimstone, who is the great hero of the Char, to try to face off against Duke Baradin. So another change uh, since last we showed the game is uh, on the right half of the interface, um, right above the right half of your skill bar, we used to have energy posts potions there. And energy potions used to be used whenever you used a skill in addition to being used when you dodged. We wanted the dodge mechanic to be more of a part of combat. And so what we did is we stripped that uh, the component that was used by skills. So skills now operate only on cooldown. And that, right, that button on the right is your dodge button and it uses the bar. Now what that's going to allow us to do is to give uh, professions the ability to manipulate that bar. So for example, thieves might be able to replenish their allies' dodge bars, which will be a really cool, um, characterful way for thieves to help support their group. So you can see we've, uh, we're fighting through the crypts here, and uh, we have found Ritlock Brimstone, and we're about to engage in the final battle here against Duke Baradin and his ghost army. So you notice that we just got a message a new event is nearby. Just like that, you've joined in an event in Guild Wars 2. You didn't have to walk up and talk to anybody. You didn't have to read any giant paragraphs of text. Instantly, you're in this battle, and you're drawn right into it. Uh, these dynamic events scale, so the more players who show up in this content, the more ghosts that are going to come in these waves to make sure that there's enough stuff for everybody to do in this event. There he is, the ghost of Duke Baradin himself. Something, something's wrong. Where's he going here? This is one of our giant boss battles in Guild Wars 2, and we thought it was only fitting to put one of them at the end of the tutorial uh, to send a message of how seriously we want to take bringing the MMO genre into the future. Uh, we think bosses like this should be all over the game and should be part of content right off the bat, available to everyone. So this boss dynamically scales just like any other event in Guild Wars 2. He gains more health the more players that are here. Uh, he does more damage the more players that are here. Uh, and he has some special attacks that players need to watch out for. Uh, one of them is he will slam his hammer down on the ground and send everyone flying. What he's doing right now, he just slammed his hammer into the ceiling and sent rocks falling that you need to dodge out of the way of. He also does a scream that fears everyone away from him. And he's going to summon waves of ghosts that will come running out to help defend him as well. One of the things that's new for our big boss battles is we have a, a special boss camera. We alter the field of view a little bit and pull the camera back so you can see those gigantic bosses a little bit better.
Alright, we nearly got him now. And that takes us to the Char intro experience in Guild Wars 2. Um, if you guys want to check out further and see where that goes from there, we'd love you to jump on one of the demo machines, check it out. You can watch over people's shoulders. Uh, this whole Char intro experience is one of the new features that we're bringing here for Gamescom. Uh, you can actually play pretty far through it. You can see some of the personal story if you're Iron Legion, Ash Legion, or Blood Legion. Um, so we're going to transition a little bit now, uh, and we're going to do a Q&A session here. Uh, let you guys